Culture Although consideration of ethnicity inescapably deals with culture on the most basic level, concentrating on ethnic culture alone offers historical study little more than a localized spotlight for comprehending the human past. An exclusively ethnic historical approach is acceptable if focused on a single society. Any attempt to understand the broader historical reality by relying exclusively on ethnicity becomes bogged down in the complexities of ethnic diversity, raising the problem of differentiating the proverbial forest from the trees. General history must approach ethnic diversity within a context that makes the development and interactions or numerous ethnic groups comprehensible. This approach can be achieved by dealing with human culture on the higher level of civilization. Civilization represents the cultural forest, its member ethnic cultural groups constitute the trees. Three civilizations coexist among the peoples of the Balkans today, the Orthodox Eastern European, the Western European, and the Islamic, of which the Orthodox European is primary. Orthodox civilization was born in the Byzantine Empire, in which the Balkans played an integral role. Following the Islamic Turkish conquest of Byzantine Anatolia in the 11th century, the Balkans became the chief repository of orthodoxy, seconded by Russia, to which the Balkan version of orthodox civilization had been exported a century earlier. So ingrained was orthodox civilization among the Balkan peoples that it survived, with some modifications, centuries of official Islamic preeminence during the era of Ottoman domination. The same can be said regarding the import of Western European civilization, which held firm sway in the region's northwestern corner since medieval times but entered the Orthodox lands in force with the national movements of the 19th century, movements with which the Orthodox Balkan population still are contending. That two European civilizations exist may strike some as odd. When Westerners speak of Europe in cultural terms, they commonly apply certain assumptions. These assumptions are based on the historical developmental phases or periods that occurred in Western Europe, such as the Dark Ages, the Renaissance, the Reformation, the Counter-Reformation, the Scientific Revolution, the Enlightenment, and the rise of modern liberal democracy, nationalism, and the nation-state. If such assumptions are not applied, then economic ones, once again based on Western experiences, our progression from slaveholding, through feudalism and mercantilism, to the industrial revolution and market capitalism. In the Balkans, only the Slovenes and Croats who inhabit the northwestern corner can be included as European because of their lengthy ties to Western European developments. As for the other Balkan peoples, their historical experiences do not coincide with the Western pattern. Their heritage is bound directly to the Byzantine Empire, which was nothing less than the eastern half of the Roman Empire that survived the decline and fall of the Western by a thousand years and in which the living traditions of the classical world never disappeared. Thus, they did not experience a Dark Ages or a Renaissance similar to that of the Western Europeans. The close partnership of church and state in Byzantine society precluded the emergence of a Western-style Reformation and Counter-Reformation, while the theocratic society imposed on the Byzantine Balkans by centuries of Ottoman Islamic rule hindered any sort of secular scientific revolution or enlightenment. When in the 19th century the peoples of the Byzantine Ottoman Balkans embraced Western European concepts of nationalism, the nation-state, and liberal democracy, along with their scientific industrial capitalist economic foundations, they did so like botanists attempting to produce new plant strains by grafting them onto a different but closely related cultural trunk. They could do so because neither they nor the Western Europeans doubted that they were European, despite their developmental differences. A certain set of unique cultural attributes are European. One obviously is the Greco-Roman heritage. The hyphenation of the term is important. It expresses the cultural reality of the Hellenic legacy, in that it is composed of two related but different traditions. At its base lies the sense of human reality created by the classical Greeks. The perception that the individual human is the supreme expression of universal perfection, 
serving as a standard against which all elements of creation are measured. That reality was reflected in every manifestation of classical Greek culture, explaining its emphasis on ideal realism and sense of timeless universality in even art form, establishing the context for mythological and philosophical development and spawning traits of humaneness and rationality in seeking to understand the physical world. It also created in the Greek mentality deep-seated propensities toward mysticism, ritualism, and symbolism concerning the human relationship with the supernatural world. When the Romans began their conquest of the eastern Mediterranean world in the 2nd century BCE, they recognized the superiority of Greek culture in the more esoteric realms of human experience. Because of their agrarian roots, the Romans' culture stressed the value of the individual but also of the need for the individual's strong commitment to a central authority that represented the will of society and was charged with ensuring the community's maintenance, territorial expansion, and defense. Individualism, coupled with civic responsibilities, nurtured in the Romans a practicality in dealing with the world. Out of those traits grew their highly developed predilections for legalism, organizational efficiency, militarism, administration, all of the qualities needed for upholding their centrally governed, agricultural world. Practicality also fostered in them superior engineering, planning, and technical skills unmatched by any of their contemporaries. The Greeks' realism and rationality sat well with the Romans' practicality and orderliness, so the Roman conquerors flung open the door to wholesale cultural partnership. The combination of the two cultures was not completely harmonious, Roman copies of Greek originals displayed subtle but marked differences. The Roman copy had about it a noticeable sense of concrete photographic realism that was completely lacking in the elegant, refined, and idealized Greek original. This dual quality permeated all aspects of the Greco-Roman heritage. It was sustained through the use of both the Greek and the Latin languages in the Roman Mediterranean world, and the speakers of each considered those of the other culturally interior. Latin speakers predominated in the Western Roman provinces, Greek speakers did so in the Eastern ones. When the Emperor Diocletian, 284-305, divided the Roman Empire into two administrative halves to stabilize the imperial succession and to better defend empire's far-flung borders against foreign enemies, he did so along the invisible line marking the human cultural divide in the northwestern corner of the Balkan Peninsula separating the Greek East and Latin West. This line ran through the territory of today's Bosnia-Herzegovina. Although his administrative action failed to solve the grave military and administrative problems facing the empire, Diocletian's splitting of the Roman state succeeded in institutionalizing the demarcation, creating the hyphen between the two branches of Greco-Roman civilization. After him, the two branches developed along increasingly divergent lines. A second common European attribute is the vital role played by peoples new to the classical Hellenic world, the so-called barbarians, in forging the birth of a European cultural reality. Without the 5th through 9th century barbarian migrations into Roman territories, one cannot imagine Europe as anything other than a geographical term. The incursions destroyed much of classical Hellenism, but that which survived was injected with large doses of the barbarians' native cultures, creating a cultural mixture that became the alloy in which Europe was cast. Mostly Germanic peoples inundated the Western, Latin-speaking areas of the Greco-Roman world. Slavs and Turks settled in its Eastern, Greek-speaking Balkan region. After the dust of the initial German invasions cleared, those interlopers established settled states of their own, loosely modeled after the Western Empire they had destroyed. The Germanic states retained a bastardized form of Latin Hellenism by means of the Roman Catholic Church, which survived the disruption of the invasions to serve as the cultural cement that lent them a measure of cohesion. The Slavs, who began entering the Eastern Roman Balkans in the 6th century, never managed to destroy that portion of the classical Hellenic state. Their inroads cost the empire some territory, but its political, military, and economic strength ensured its survival. 
The coming of the Slavs facilitated the transformation of the East Roman into the Byzantine Empire, and Hellenic continuity was preserved. When Slavic states developed in the Balkans, most did so under the strong cultural influence of neighboring Byzantium. A living Hellenic tradition was imposed on the newly settled Slavs by the sheer force of local Byzantine predominance. The Greek language gained sway over those Slavs whom the empire managed to incorporate directly within its borders. Those who remained outside of the empire were brought into close cultural association with it through the invention of a uniquely Slavic written language, the Cyrillic, which was inspired by Byzantine Christian missionaries and paralleled Greek literary forms. One last and most crucial attribute defines Europe culturally, Christianity. Without it, the other two attributes are meaningless. Although Greco-Roman tradition and the input of new peoples are important components in Europe's cultural definition, their combination with Christianity is necessary to delineate it completely. No one today considers Syria, Jordan, Egypt, or Libya European states, yet their inhabitants once were as Hellenized and overrun by outsiders as were those of France, Italy, Greece, or Bulgaria. In the former case, the outsiders were 7th century Arabs, who brought with them the newly born worldview expressed by Islam. Although the Islamic civilization borrowed heavily from the Judeo Christian and Hellenic traditions, equally heavy doses of Mesopotamian and native Arabic traditions ensured its unique core cultural identity. The stages of Islam's historical development bore little resemblance to those of Europe until relatively recent times. Christianity is the seminal factor in identifying Europe. In fact, the terms Europe, as commonly used today, did not appear until the late 18th and early 19th centuries, prior to that time the traditional term was Christendom. Only those peoples who have assimilated the Christian worldview completely have ever been considered European. Since the early Middle Ages, those non-Christian peoples who entered geographical Europe and found themselves in contact with the region's Christian societies were forced to choose between joining them by converting or risking possible annihilation at their hands. This fact explains the importance of Christian conversion for relative latecomers, such as Bulgarians, Czechs, Hungarians, Poles, and Russians, into the European world. Their conversions were their passkeys to membership in the European community. The borders of Europe became, and remain, synonymous with the limits of mainstream Christian culture. Instead of a single European civilization stemming from the demise of Hellenism by Christianity and barbarian incursions, two basic European variants emerged because of the cultural division within the parent Greco-Roman civilization. They can be considered analogous to twins, since the two sibling civilizations share a preponderance of fundamental traits but are different enough in character and mentality to ensure their separate individuality. Both essentially express the same Christian perception of reality framed in common Hellenic terms, but the forms of expression differ. The difference depends on the branch of Greco-Roman tradition out of which each sprang. That which emerged in the western part of the old Greco-Roman world couched Christianity in terms of the legality, practicality, and militancy peculiar to the Romans' hierarchical Latin Hellenic culture. Latin-based Roman Catholicism, which institutionalized these basic traits in a Christian context, epitomized the cultural nature of Western Europe at its most elemental level. Every ethnic society that espoused the Catholic form of Christianity and adopted the Latin alphabet for its written language became a human component of Western Europe. Its twin emerged from the Eastern, Greek half of the Hellenic world, where Christianity expressed in the highly mystical, ritualized, and symbolic universality of Greek culture. The Christian institutionalization of those traits occurred in the Byzantine Empire's Greek-based Orthodox Christianity. Unlike the Catholic West, which brooked no deviation from its Latin-based culture, more metaphysical orthodoxy demonstrated a multicultural tolerance. Societies espousing Orthodox Christianity were free to do so in their various native languages, but collectively they constituted members of Orthodox Eastern Europe. Today, 
44.3 million, of the 69.3 million inhabitants of the Balkans are Orthodox Christians, constituting clear majorities in the populations of Bulgaria, Greece, Macedonia, Romania, and Rump Yugoslavia, Serbia and Montenegro, while in Albania and Bosnia-Herzegovina they represent the largest religious minority. Orthodox European civilization is the historically seminal civilized culture of the Balkan Peninsula's majority population. This fact, not geography or ethnicity, definitively places the Balkans in Eastern Europe.